to create perverse incentives. For our part, the bureaucratic temptation to use money as evidence of commitment and the urge to spend down accounts for fear of losing funds in the next round of appropriations added to the rush of the reconstruction funding stream. So what does this all mean for America's longest war? CW6 contributor Kimberly Dvorak is here to explain. Kimberly, a lot of information, a lot of big numbers. So where does that leave us? Well, where it leaves us is, you know, we've been in conflict in the Middle East for roughly 15 years now. And in Afghanistan, it's really a tribal nation, not necessarily a typical government. So it's you just don't go down to your local uh, congressman's office and, and have problems dealt with. So what Afghanistan deals with, they have a lot of corruption there and the in influx of money that the U.S. has spent into it. And just for an example, so the viewers could see this, in 2012, the United States gave Afghanistan $19 billion. Their GDP is $20 billion. So you're seeing a lot of money move in and out. And you're seeing a lot of people having to spend this money, and the way to get things done in that country is to pay off the warlords. Now, paying off the warlords, obviously, is something that uh, the United States is not supposed to be participating in, but that's the way things are. So are you saying that there hasn't been a lot of progress? No. I, I, you know, I would say that actually, that you know, when you look at the drug front, the dr because that's where the largest uh, you know, fields of poppies are, um, I, one of my uh, sources, uh, Khrushchev's uh, grandson, reached out to me when I was covering this a few years back, saying that Russia is also getting an influx of the drugs, heroin, on their streets. So it's creating problems outside the region itself as well. And you know, when you talk to academics about it, you know, where are we at after 15 years? We really haven't really created a, a, a great environment there for the locals. And we're, we're, it's kind of a moot point. It's we're right back where we started. And uh, this week there was a Brown University report that came out and said the United States has spent $4.79 trillion, trillion. trillion on, these, on this war effort in the Middle East. So, I mean, when you look at the guys that are serving the rank and file, they're doing their job, they're listening, and they're doing what they're supposed to, and they write in their action reports. So, so do you think that here in the U.S. that we will spend less in the future? Well, I think that the money is starting to run out. Yeah, there's still, um, I think, 20 or $30 billion left to be spent in Afghanistan because it was appropriated by Congress. However, you know, most Americans, I think, would say maybe it's time to cut that off because they are moving back towards, um, you know, Taliban rule. We're having a tougher time maintaining what's going on in Afghanistan. I just want to make a quick point about the troops on the ground. They file action reports every week as to what's going on, and they're, they're telling me that they're being told by their higher-ups when they come across drugs, in Kandahar region that they they're told to let these guys go through so you know I don't want to put this on the troops they're doing their job but the people in Washington DC and uh, around in NATO are, are definitely not doing great theirs. insight thank yeah. you so much Kimberly Dvorak I really appreciate it thank always you. so insightful thank, thank you so you. much